Hey everybody, thank you for joining us. I have the amazing privilege of um, talking to a good friend of mine, uh, one of uh, one of the early people that I got to meet when I came out of my cocoon in 2018 after being wallowing in my self-pity and wallowing in my self-regret and, uh, and realizing that nobody is responsible for my action except me and my emotions and how I deal with the world but me. Uh, of course, I can get great help and uh, great input um, and by meeting other people and having their amazing um, uh, input into my life emotionally, uh, visually, financially and all the great things you can get by being part of a community like the arts in, in Northland, especially in Whangarei. So if you're just joining us, I'd like to introduce you to Julia Tapp, a good friend of mine, as I said, from Northland Art Center. She's a airbrush artist as well as a um, accomplished airbrush artist, as well as an art tutor here in um, here in Whangarei. So take it away, Julia. Please um, let our audience know who you are and what you're about. Oh, okay. Hi. Um, thanks for having us on the show today, Aru. Sorry it took me a while to get here. So um, I was... Uh, working between commissions and things like that and just, well, COVID-19 obstacles. Yeah. <laughs> but we're here. Nice to see you. Thank you for having us here. Um, we are the Northland Arts Centre. So we opened the Northland Arts Centre almost two years ago. And it is a community arts recreation space. Um, as you know, you have graced us with your presence several times. So um, we do kids' classes. Um, I do airbrushing on vehicles, of course, and murals and, oh, gosh, anything you could really, really imagine. <laughs> um, and I've trained for 10 years in New Zealand, Auckland and Melbourne and been lucky enough to represent New Zealand overseas at some mm. paint competitions um, previously. So um, we now have our art space and um, it's it's based around community. And, um, well, is there anything you'd like to know, Aru? Sure. <laughs> so, um, um, you, uh, <laughs> a lot of your work uh, is very festival based uh you uh, you know you get out of the community i mean the last one was just this recent um uh, event um i can't remember it was arts in the park one of the amazing uh functions we have every uh i think it was around january in uh, in Whangarei, which a lot of people get to see uh what is available to uh in the arts forum in northland and a lot of yeah, other people yeah. get to be involved in that and take, uh, you know, participate. Children come in and get, um, you know, get their face painted. Uh, they blow bubbles. They paint themselves. Do as part of the murals. Uh, they get to see what is available, like the libraries in there doing their, uh, you know, their uh, pin making. You've got um, right next to them. You've got the gaming there with um, with a youth space and what they do as a you know, as a community base for helping our um, our school school based learners uh, and uh, for future uh, for them as leaders in our community. Because I mean, we get so used to thinking about the older people leading, older people leading, but we the mentorship uh, of um, helping these youth actually become leaders of the future, as well as lead lead each other now. So as a as a teacher, you teach art at your community uh, at your um at your business. And a lot of things, as we've learned, due to what's happened with the uh, with the bear bug, is that um, a lot of things that a lot of us who put on functions, who attend functions, aren't able to. And if you're doing a business where you're teaching people in groups, and you're not able to, how have you been doing that now in the middle of this? I know that a lot of people are doing a lot of different things in the community to reach out to their um, students, reach out to other, um, you know, to sell. You know, like you're saying, you're doing commissions now. You know, how are you know how do you how have you been dealing with teaching while dealing with while being locked up in your home? Well, that's actually been really hard because essentially, when we went from level four to level three, it was very quick in a matter of was it 48 hours? I think it was uh, three to four. Oh, sorry, yeah. Three yeah. to four was, um, sorry, my apologies, was within 48 hours. So pretty much overnight, we suddenly lost um, two-thirds of our business. 
which yeah. was the live custom shows, the face painting, and the teaching. It was all mm. shut down. So yeah. we've had some really great help, actually, um, from um, places doing business resilience packages. Our accountants, uh, Villa mm. Chartered Accountants, has put us onto resilience plans during COVID-19. Um, and we've shifted... Well, we have a series of one-hour live tutorials that we've actually started doing for free for people. So they're wow. all available on the Northland Arts Centre page. Yeah. Um, in regards mm -hmm. to income, I'm relying on, at the moment, the custom painting, the the, the motorbikes, the, the cars, all that sort of artwork. Luckily, um, mm -hmm. I have a bit of a queue, so... Mm -hmm. Hopefully, once we open, we can get into that. But yeah, times are times are hard right now. Um, yeah. I think, though, for us, like just speaking personally, not speaking for any other business, mm. um, I'm really positive about this shutdown. It's happened for a terrible reason. Yep. <laughs> um, you know, and we don't want to take that away from it. But for us, I mean, after what we went through with the passing of our son and the accident that set up the Northland Arts Centre, we've learnt to look at every opportunity as an opportunity. And yeah. for us, lockdown, it's time for us to move online, set up our, our web pages, plan for we're yeah. going to have a fantastic new opening. So um, we've, we've essentially been sent all home to either sit there and go, oh, I hate lockdown and all yeah. the rest, or, you know, move forwards. We can still move forwards in lockdown. We can still build community. We can still be there for each other. Well, that's what I've noticed. is like a lot of people kind of com continue doing business like they used to. And the sadness of that is that that is done. The next six yeah. months... If you continue like that, you will not survive. The only people yeah, that will come out of this are people who take this time to be proactive, connect with people online, build the business wider, like not just locally wider. Say, look, this is what I do. These are my skills. But hey, hey, you over there in uh, Europe, would you be interested yeah. in my work? You know, would you like to have a look? Here's all my pictures on my website of what I can do, right? Would you over there in uh, UK? And this is the time to do that. And I think a, a sadness I feel is that people aren't doing that. They're just shutting themselves down and going, yeah, it'll be fine when we come out of this. Uh, yeah, woe me because I can't pay my rent. But the other side is like being so proactive. You're probably going to end up more people being aware of who you are now because they're stuck to the screen than they were aware of you before. And, you know, I, I've noticed that anybody who's actually out there doing this sort of thing of being, hey, uh, I noticed today, Trish Clark, right? Yeah. She put out $65, $65 for this, uh, you know, for her artwork, or 120 for two. Within a couple of hours, all sold. Yeah. Right? Before that's, it was like, come to my gallery, before it was come to my, come and look at my artwork in the gallery and you might get those arty farty types as I like to call them because there are arty farty types out there. Even as an artist, I know there are those arty farty types who, was, who only go to shows and never check out anybody's work anywhere else unless it's in the gallery. But the galleries now are going, hey, look, this is what we have on offer in our, in our work. And this is, yeah, you're right. This is a great opportunity to connect with the wider community. You might have people now hearing about you due to what you're doing in, in Kataya, right? Well, what's really great is we've got, with the free one-hour lessons that we've uploaded on our page, mm. um, we're getting pictures back from kids and students overseas and in Dunedin yeah. going, hey, we always wanted to take your class, but you were in Whangarei. So, yeah. again, we come back to that business resilience package that we're working on, and it's not just for COVID. It's um, important for all businesses right now to yeah. focus on moving every area they can online that they can. I yeah. mean, in my opinion, that is, um, you know, that's your backup plan because imagine mm. if we had come into lockdown all with backup plans for our businesses ready. So, um, and there is really great support out there at the moment too. There's a lot of funding open. Mm. Um, there's a lot of um, who, sorry, just 
who was it who was doing the um uh, who put us on to the all the funding things and the business was it the are you about, business commerce the business are you talking community? about boosted and stuff like that what was that sorry you're talking about boosted with hinu yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's a fantastic, great example. Boosted. Yeah. So the first thousand, they're matching dollar for dollar, mm. um, which is, you know, just for the arts for this month. So um, there's a few more conditions to it than that. But, I yeah. mean, people are really gathering around the arts because, again, you might have seen the posts on Facebook without the comics, you know, without mm. books, without music, without paintings, what we, we would have? be very, very depressed right now because yeah. <laughs> if there was no music, if there was no arts, uh, if there was nothing to read, nothing to watch, no Netflix, we'd be very, very depressed people right now. And that would cause a lot of mental health issues, which people aren't aware of. And like I was saying on stream last night with Jared, that I, that was the first thing I was very conscious about uh, as an artist, that all my other artist friends and acquaintances and people in the world would suffer greatly if you, if they didn't get a hold of their mental health right now, right going into this. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. And too, for the public, it's not just about looking at art or listening to music or reading a book. It's keeping the hands busy, keeping the mind busy. Even if you suck at playing guitar, play that guitar. Yeah. <laughs> Paint yourself up and play the guitar. <laughs> well, nobody's um, going to mind it if you suck right now, are they? Nobody's going to care if you're not strumming the right chord. You're not putting the G chord in. You're not, you know, you know, you're not, you're not playing the A minor or whatever. Because guess what? Everybody's feeling the same thing right now. Well, yeah, and and apart from your house, no one else is there to witness it. So you know, do that bad yeah. art, throw it in the bin, whatever. It's yeah. <laughs> it's, an, it's a great opportunity. It is a great opportunity to be uh, to challenge yourself to step outside. I, I've noticed people that just basically uh, will only stick to what they do, and that's all they do. But they don't want to take something different, and it's it's sad to see that. And those are the sorts of people that are going to not come out of this well, you know. We're if all you do, if all you do is one thing, and positive, I think mm. it's. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we can focus on all the things that have been taken away or all the plans that were disrupted. Or, I mean, and, and we come from a very unique circumstance because we've been through so much in life. Um, yeah. My husband and I, through everything we've been through several times over, we're really used to going, hey, that's it. Let's drift with the, go with the flow. Yeah. And start again once we hit a bank so we're all kind of the whole nation's been swept into this big flowing river and you can fight it or you can just go you know what let's work with it and maybe where we land sorry for speaking so metaphorically but maybe yeah. where we land is forwards of where we started yeah i think um and this is if you've been through uh trauma through stress through loss of income through um loss of uh, business, if you've gone bankrupt, if you've gone into redundancy, if you were fired from your jobs before, or if you were let go, you know, all that stuff that's happened to you before, if you haven't had that, you're going to find this very hard. But if you have, you have learned from that. If you've chosen to allow yourself to learn from that. And like you said, you've, you've already experienced certain things in your life and you've said, okay, what, how do I, you know, it's an opportunity, right? You said any any sort of crisis is an opportunity. That I think it's the Chinese that have a word. You know, the Chinese word for uh, crisis is actually opportunity. Somebody was telling me a long time ago. Right, right. It reminds me of when I was about nineteen, my house burnt down, and mm. um, I remember thinking, "Oh crap! Oh well, I suppose I moved to Hamilton." And <laughs> I mean, no moving trucks, no yeah. stuff to pack. It's at the end of it. I mean, yes, this is a crisis, and it's not to be taken lightheartedly. There are yeah. people dying, which is really sad. But we also have to look after our mental health and yeah. um, and and our future too. And and I'm not just saying let go and go with the flow, but there's certain yeah. things that whether 
we can't do anything about at the moment. And one of those things is lockdown. Yeah. So I mean, use the time productively. And that's it. I mean, like, if you, if you, you've got this opportunity, you've had this opportunity for five, four weeks or so. Uh, and if you, all you did was sit there and moan and be depressed and um, allow yourself to get in a downer and just let the, just move with the flow. What will happen is that you've lost all this opportunity to learn. You could have been online, right? Uh, watching videos on how to look after your mental health, how to um, learn a new um, skill, how to um, you know learn guitar, as you said, or play badly. And if you've let these four weeks go past, I feel sorry for you. I really do. If you if you allowed those four weeks to just sit there and just go wash over you like a wave, and you're just still stuck in that place, thinking that later you'll be going, oh, I wish I'd done something with it. I wish I'd gone on to Northern Arts Centre and decided to take that course, you know, free course for a week, uh, you know, first course, and had a look at to see if I could actually be an artist or, you know, I could do it all and maybe, you know what, maybe I can't paint a landscape. Yeah, I can't paint a landscape, but maybe I could do a cartoon or maybe I could do stick figures or maybe do caricatures or airbrush. And this is a great thing about what you do because you, and you provide. Also, and, and so much of it is in the delivery technique. So if one yeah. video or one learning method doesn't work, try another one on the same subject because yeah. people will often only teach in one particular way. And I spent years training to be a teacher. And, for example, I've actually got a great example sitting right here. So... I'll just grab this. The other day for a scout club, we decided, and um, what do you call it, cadets club, we decided to teach them how to draw aeroplanes. So this was one of the free lessons. Can you see that? Uh, come forward a bit more, please. Forward a bit more. This by aeroplane. I'll go to yep. the side for you. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Right? That looks great. And, um, of course, people see that. And they freak out because they're like, oh, I can't do that. But what we actually did in the video was for we changed the teaching styles personally mm. so that um, people that are right brain dominant and learn from seeing and shapes can learn. But the other way we do it is on our test sheet here. Yep. You'll see if I come up real close, there's measurements. Can right. you see all the numbers? Yep. So, I was going to mention that. Like, I was yep. gonna... So we're breaking it's... Yeah, I was going to mention that. See, when I started learning how to draw, like before, you know, when I started freehanding before, but when I got to do like big pictures of Wolverine, like A3 size, I did cubes. You know, the, the yeah, old uh, and maths books. The other way that we've done here is we've created two axes. One, oh, sorry, it's all back to front. One up mm -hmm. and down and zero across the middle. And actually drawn the aeroplane using just yep. math and rulers going right here's the a axis here's the zero axis yep. um let's rule this thing out with rulers and then focus mm. on our shading so there's always ways around learning if you don't get something the first time and don't mm. feel bad that's my biggest message to the community don't feel bad if one way doesn't work for you yeah find find a different method you know, it's um, there's always other methods. So you can uh, message us, Northland Art Centre, for advice. If there's, uh, I'm putting that out there openly to people. Yeah. If you're working on a picture or a painting and you're struggling and it's just not working, um, message us on Facebook, mm -hmm. Northland Art Centre, and I'll have a look at it and see if I can help you out. You know what? That's that's what we do, and I'm not even going to charge for that because I think that's a that's how we make people feel good about ourselves is improving on things. So mm. I'm all for everyone working on themselves a little bit during lockdown. It doesn't have to be with art, but art is yeah. my genre, my forte. Mm. Yeah. I so mean, um, there you it's go. Kind of, it's advice. kind of like me, like with like uh, my thing is talking. Right. My, my thing is talking. Uh, uh, I've trained myself to be a journalist for so long that uh, by, you know, being blogging, writing for people and talking and stuff and actually um, being a very sociable person, even though sometimes I just can't be sociable at all or don't feel like it. But, you know, talking is my way of thinking. So when this happened, I was like, 
I can't physically be with people and encourage them or, you know, get encouraged from encouragement from them or talk to them how they're feeling. You know what? I'm going to start making the videos I've been trying to make for a while, you know, and really get into it. I want to really do, hey, how are you guys doing today? Bring on other people to come on and say, hey, this is what I do. And that that allows us to connect and get a bit of input in me, right? Personally in me, because I need that as well. And also in other people's and being and other people being able to give to, you know, like yourselves, helping anybody's watching there. We've got people watching here around, a whole bunch of group people watching right now. They are getting input as well, right? So they they're actually taking part in what we're doing. And so we are actually building an emotional community around people by doing this and um i mean we're talking about like when you're having crisis so like when i when i started art school three months and i had an accident so i couldn't draw anymore my whole thing that got me into art school was being able to draw so when you have an ex where your uh, tendons are sliced on your um drawing hand what do you do okay so i can't draw i'm going to put myself all into building clay like sculptures, something I don't have to draw about, I can just mold it. And then again, it was like, I, I want to do comics, but I can't draw comics because my hand's gone. Uh, you know, I can only hold a pen for about 10 minutes or so at, at a time. Digital, right? Yeah. Let's go digital. So yep. if, you, if you choose to let crises ground you down and halt you from doing something, you just got to move on to something else. There's so many platforms. And like you're saying, right, uh, you've got so many commissions backed up now because people still want what they want. They still want to have work done. And, um, and they still want to be taught. And so you've gone online to teach, uh, you know, and you've gone out and said, hey, here's a free hour-long uh, first course, whatever it is, however long it is. And... Dunedin, people from Dunedin, you're going to, you know, because you're online and because social media is what, I mean, we have the best internet in the world, in New Zealand. Our, ours is fastest. Nobody has it as, as good as we do. Ours is the fastest internet in the world and we're structured the best in the world. So because I've talked to people, like we discussed this last night with Jared, because we've, our internet is so good, we can produce so much good quality work right now online for the world to consume. And I'm sure that a lot of people are probably looking at us for just for our, for our technology and wishing for our technology alone. But then because we're so ahead, because as a nation, uh, we're very creative. And, um, and I think a lot of people who don't understand how creative we are, haven't been to the um, the festivals, the conventions, the expos, because <laughs> they felt like, uh, I'm getting to my point, because they felt like it's only for the arty farty. Yeah. And because of that whole mentality. It's not so. we're, the, we're the number we're, eight wire nation. Exactly. And because of that belief in people, it's put them off being involved. But now... But now, because of our technology, but because of our creativity, because of the fact that our government had said that we're going to put money into arts, people go, why? Why would you want to give the fight to this arty fatty people money? And then they go, well, do you realize what they've been doing? And you go online, you see them giving out all this free tuition, like you're saying, giving out all these um, f uh, free mu uh, music, give it, putting on shows, uh, Phantom of the Opera, all this. Yeah. And people go, I can see now why it's very important to our culture to have an amazing and productive and uh, well-funded art base because otherwise, what are we going to be watching? Well, even down to, if you think about it, the technology, even if you can't see the arts in it, what about all the filters on the phones that are being applied <laughs> these days? They were designed by artists, you know? Yeah. It's... Yeah. Um, the changing of the lighting and and you can change all the contrast and exposure and sharpness on your cell phone. Yep. This is it's technology, but it's art. And the so the 
two so, are so closely related. Um, mm -hmm. But it's um, at the end of it, there's art and so many things that we just yeah. we don't even well we don't I even mean, think about. This mouse is created by um, designed by an artist. Artist, we don't even think about that. You know, you got yeah. something like this pencil. The artwork on that pencil, right? Designed by an artist. Absolutely. Uh, this little um, mouse, um, this sound mic thing, right? Designed by designed by an artist. Because, sound artist. Yeah, and not on yeah sound artist as well, but also the fact that making sure that each each ridge here picks up the sound properly, and this is the mentality of people. The reason I think people have forgotten how important art is because of that culture of the artifati, that, that yeah. mentality. They've forgotten about the number eight wire, as you mentioned, right? We're, we're the greatest nation of pioneers, if I, you know, to think about yeah. that. We, our, even though our, 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 our bed of emblem icon is a kiwi bird who sticks his head in the ground all the time, seriously, we're like the moa. We're always up there looking with the head, looking above everybody. And this is what I find myself. I'm always looking out there going, what else is out there? How else can I get involved? You know, and but this whole this one thing that I've really noticed about this whole idea of the arty party is that this one month in has chucked that aside. Right. It has chucked that aside and people can say, look, Look at everything the um, the arts community is doing to benefit our communities, um, because I mean I know there's a there's a lot of money being lost because of just this, this one month for the arts, uh, and I mean we've our convention isn't going to happen this year, so I know that everybody that we're going to pay to be there, they're not receiving that payment that's coming out of us, right? And then all everybody that was come to going there, that's not coming back in, so yeah. What is, you know, so, but not just, this is just the two of us, right? But thinking about all the other things that are coming on, you had like uh, Matariki was going to come on with all these amazing festivals and all that funding for all the, like the caravan uh, people with their food that was going to sell, uh, that's going to pay for their income, for their rent. All that is gone. And then the, so the arts, um, then the funding bodies come in and said, hey, we're going to put money out, you know, and so on. But the other thing is, we deal with mental issues when we come to arts and the emotional things. So all those people that come and get involved in these festivals, in these programs, uh, we, are, we have a very high rate when it comes to teen suicide, as well as adult suicide, not just teen. A lot of people just focus on the teen suicide. And I've been talking about this for 20 years so and been studying this in 20 years uh, and thinking about it. But th there's an adult mental suicide, uh, mental health issues that are involved as well. Uh, and one of the things I noticed um, by chance was that one person, like in America, uh, a weekend, just did it. She was a supermodel and all that, just didn't help, um, didn't, wasn't able to connect with people, gone. Yeah. So that's an adult, a 35-year-old person. And we always, yeah. you know, we always talk about teen suicide, but there's, there's a loss of a parent uh, there or a child there. Uh, but then we look at ourselves in Northland, we have a high rate. And being involved in these festivals, being a, given a chance in these uh, experts conventions, to see that there's other things apart to be involved in, this is, gonna, you know, this is the sadness of it that we, for the next six months, we're not able to push it out there. So by doing this online stuff, I think it's a great thing because you're still saying, hey, you can still be involved if you're not able to get to those festivals, you, if you're still not able to get to uh, those group events, you can still get involved in these communities. I mean, um, Hindu was talking about Zoom. You know, we can have about 16, 20, so many people and you can discuss all these things. And like you're running classes online? Uh, yeah, so we're just doing them on Facebook actually. So if you go to the Northland Arts Centre Facebook page, click on the videos link, there's... Um, Oh, I think about 10 videos there at the moment, which are all free tutorials. So um, they're all one hour long. And not only that, but we thought, considering everyone's in isolation and lockdown, we use minimal colors and minimal 
tools, things we find around the house, like, you know, toilet paper, mm. <laughs> if there's any left. That's it. I mean, um, yeah, uh, but if you can't buy something, right? To... If you can't buy your tools, you've got to find something else, shapes and stuff. That, that's it. And we love doing things like we've had classes at the art center before lockdown where we drank coffee and went right what are we doing today guys and they're like oh i love coffee so we've done coffee painting class why not you know it's um yeah. it, it's if you can make a mark on that paper it's a not just a type of art but a form of expression and expression in itself yeah. is healing and yeah. that again so sorry to go back to the art center but that was the fundamentals of it was a place for people to come and heal and express without being judged or graded so that's why we've broken down the barriers of when you walk into our shop you'll see our gallery wall there's paintings by four-year-olds and seven-year-olds sitting next to paintings by 18 times award-winning artists. It yeah. doesn't matter. Art should be open to community. It should yeah. be affordable for community, um, and it should be accessible to everyone. And we have had people literally ring up and go, I need you to work through a project with me. I'm at my wits' end. I don't know if I'm going to be here next week. And I've gone, hang on, what do you mean? And they've said, look, you know, they just want to die. And yeah. we've gone, right, come on in. Let's just do this art. Let's get you through this project. Let's do that. And and it was, it's been amazing. I didn't expect that when we opened for people to literally be saying, you saved our, li our lives through art, or I am here yeah. because of that session where you sat down with me, had that mm -hmm. coffee, and we just talked. Um, and doodled on paper so yeah. you know um the arts is in everything but it's actually proven clinically that 20 minutes of doing art or something creative releases good hormones that counteract yeah. the stress hormone so there actually is a science mm. behind how it can help cure depression and help you feel good yeah i mean i um I, when i like uh in about I think it was April. It's been two years now. It's like, so it's my celebration of two years of being for the first time, for the first time uh, spending two years alone. And, um, and if, if you, you know, if you, if you, you know, don't understand that, let me ex explain that to you um, in this weird way. I moved out of a family home full of people, my sister, my brother, my uncles, my mum and dad at the age of almost 17 left i'm 47 now so think about 30 years so for 28 entire years i was boarding renting living with relationships a rally is being married and so on and flooding for 28 entire years so i was used to i was used to being social continuously i had children in the home i had adults in the home at various times i had teenagers in the home and for the first time after 20 no let's say about 40 40 you know 40 odd years 40 uh, 40 sorry 45 years of being on the earth i was for the first time alone in a in an apartment by myself and i was like this is the loneliest i've ever been uh there's no noise it's just me. How do I deal with this? And my sister said, and I was ringing up my sister. I said, come over, come over, come over, you know, come over. Because uh, what's going on? It's like, I'm really lonely. She said, well, you're going to have to learn to deal with this. Yeah. And, and so I thought, how do I deal with this? And I thought, what do I do? Put some music on and started drawing. Started, you know, started playing with some artwork, started um, cutting up stuff and just, um, yeah. then I jumped on the YouTube, yeah. <laughs> watched some videos on my mental health. And I really, really want to express that to you guys. If you, if you, you know, you need to think about how you, you, um, how did, you, how you need to deal, figure out how you got to deal with yourself. Right, you're mentally. How do you mentally fix yourself? Because I know we have so much trauma in our life. What happens when someone just says, 
you suck at that art piece. That's, that's a simple life. How do you deal with, it? deal with it? You can either go negative, negative, negative phone, or if you get online and go, how do people deal with this when they have negative comments on their work? And this is the time to do that, is to learn to figure out how to do that. And I think if art is, and like you said, expression is a form of healing. And if you can express what you feel in your brain, in your heart, on a piece of paper, through poetry, through um, scratching out some cartoon or whatever, th stick figures, or painting, or music, then then you learn how to deal with things. And I think you your work is an amazing way because you work with children up to adults and older. And I think not yep, many yep, people so are able to do that. So how do you do that? <laughs> How do you go from teaching little children all the way to elderly people? And not only that, not only that, but handicapped or people who are handicapped by their own abilities and stuff like that, or physical or mental. It's about being able, like, as a, a trained teacher, there's actually five different delivery methods which are used in teaching. Um, and everyone will respond to one of their senses majoritively. So it's about tapping into how that person learns. But something interesting I found when we started was when we started teaching, say, five to ten-year-olds or five to seven-year-olds, we kept the lessons really basic. And then sometimes we would have a five or an eight-year-old in the same class where there might have been ten to fourteen-year-olds learning. And we found that the younger children started requesting to sit the lessons that the 14-year-olds and 11 and 12-year-olds were learning. And the initial reaction was that might be a bit hard, but again, we always let people have a go. And these children managed to do the lesson so amazingly well and grasped all the concepts of um, the mathematics. We changed it a little bit for them. So um, we just made some simple scales and things for them. And people rise to the challenge if they want to learn. And yeah. that's it. As some people really have that crave for knowledge. And I think in some ways are held back by the fact that they're not allowed to access at a higher level education. And some people or something that's more to their, that will stimulate their mind and their learning needs. Mm. Um, and some people aren't there to learn at all. They're there purely to heal. So people make their own choices. And we personally with the teaching, we run it, I suppose it's a bit like a Steiner school is probably the way to put it without it being Steiner. So sorry for mm. using that term. You come in. You choose what you want to work on and what medium. We show you how to do it or how we would approach it with our mm. expertise. And if you choose to take that path and that technique, excellent. Mm. And if you need help, raise your hand and we'll suggest something else that personally as artists we would put in. But we're not going to sit there and say, this is how it's done. We are yeah. not doing... Um, specific instruction delivery techniques. Um, we do have courses with very direct instruction and specific delivery. But in regards to teaching a broad range of people, it's about working outside of the box and identifying their learning style and looking at their abilities as well. So another, for example, we have a student who has Parkinson's. He joined when he had stage two Parkinson's. And progressively, I mean, everyone knows, including him, he has accepted his artwork is not going to get better over mm. the duration of his Parkinson's because it's a de degenerative disease. Yeah. However, through the stage of his Parkinson's, we managed to not only teach him to draw, but we found the way his hand shakes was very rhythmic and in a particular way. So he could yeah. do particular textures and by simply masking off parts of the page, mm. you can peel away the tape and he can still create pictures. Mm. You know, he's still happy being able to go, I can make a tree shape. I can, you know, this is the bush and the landscape I'm doing. It, it's scribble technique. But mm. you know what? He's doing 
his art, he's holding on to his abilities the longest he can. And then we found out after his art lesson, he would then go to his speech therapist and talk for two hours about his art lesson at his speech therapy to keep his speech going. So it's, it is about, it is about delivering specific learning styles in one hand. So in some ways I'm very in the sense that I'm like, here's my left brain and this has a specific way of, of teaching in the five mm. senses and the five different delivery techniques. And on the other hand, not everyone wants to learn that way or can learn that way. So we identify the way that they can learn mm. and work around that. So it's very individualized. So classes are a maximum of seven or eight people because I, really I don't feel we could do that as effectively on a scale of 30 people yeah so um it's about giving people time it's about understanding their stories and how their mind works and seeing what they like and what they don't like and mm. and suggesting things that they could do instead of telling them what they are going to do yeah okay so yeah. talking about learning now my next subject is funding. Now, we yeah. know, I, I was talking to a financial risk management uh, person yesterday, Jared Taylor, one of my good friends, about 30,000 people are unemployed. Now, for those who are, have thought about the arts, but, but due to work, having been employed full-time or part-time and haven't had a chance to do that, and now because you're unemployed due to lack of business, um, business uh, and because business is closing down and employer can't afford you, WINS offers funding for, for learning, how to, learning art uh, at your place. Isn't that right? No. So Thank if you, you. Yeah. So if, you, if you're interested in doing something like becoming an artist or learning how, Arts, but actually getting funded to do that, and you can't af haven't been able to afford that, and getting a high level of education in that, learning to be an airbrush artist or whatever mm -hmm. it is that you know you're looking to learn. Wins is provide making provisions has made provisions these past year or so since yeah. since you've been accredited, right? So uh, I'll I'll let you speak on that now about how to go about doing that. Okay, so um, we were approved as a supplier by Work and Income New Zealand, which means that for any of our courses, including our airbrush courses, you can apply to Work and Income to take our course, which is really amazing. Um, the best way to go about it is actually to come into store or message us or email us. So at the moment, it would be message or email. And we'll have a talk to you about your circumstances and we write you a header letter with our supplier number and everything saying what our course is, where work and income can find it on the system because sometimes there's trouble there, which is why we say to people come to us first because um, work and income is a huge place and mm. people in the past have had a bit of issues finding our course on the work and income supplier system. So it's it's easier for us just to write that letter with the supplier number and say, hey, take it to your case manager. So yeah. if you are interested, do that and um, message us directly or on the Northland Arts Centre Facebook page and we can write that letter up ready to go. And the other thing that we do is... We're also um, supplying courses at the moment for the DHB and uh, we do respite as well for people that might have respite funding or special needs. Or what, what is that? Respite. What is respite? Well, so respite... Respite is usually for if there is someone in a family who might have mental health needs or be disabled, say, for example, a child, right? Um, the funding isn't for the disabled or special needs child. It might be for the parent to come in and do art and have some time away. So respite is a bit of a, a reprieve for mm. the family from the day-to-day -day care or duties of looking after that person. So we would either take the carer 
and they can have their time or we can take the person that they're claiming respite for. So we could also take, for example, one of our special needs students has Down syndrome and he gets funded through a private respite place to come into us once a week and his family get a couple of hours to focus on their business or do their shopping while we have him. So mm. it's, it's pretty cool. Respite is a, a bit of a break for families that really just just need some time to recoup their mental health, um, yep. either for themselves or for the person they care for. I um, I, I when I was in my um twenties, in my mid twenties, I um, uh, I used to work out at McLeod's Bay, and one of the things that um I was able to do was look after an autistic baby, three year old, two year old. Yeah. And I learned, I had a great, <laughs> got a greater understanding, let's just say, about I bet you that, learned a lot. <laughs> yeah, about that. But I also learned the, the stress of constant, like I did two hours, but that other 38 hours of stress on the parents, right? So I got to understand what it was like to be a parent of a uh, child of whatever on that, uh, on that you know, um, arch, pyramid, whatever, about yeah. autism. And I had to read the books before I even got to do it, uh, babysit. Uh, and, um, you know, and I got to understand how much stress it must be like as a parent, 40 hours a day or whatever, 24 hours a day. Uh, to constantly be wired and stressfully to that child's need. And I think a lot, you know, and I think a lot of people who don't have that and a lot of people who actually, you know, um, look at other parents who, are, who have nothing wrong with them, of their kids and are blessed, I must say, and it's also a blessing to such and such. But let me just talk about the normal people, as we say, all right, the normies. And in, in, in the comic and book industry, we call them normies, you know. And so the normies who don't have any issues in their homes with anybody being sick or anybody being ill, they, they don't understand. And sadly, they will make remarks in public. If the child is playing up, they'll go off. And I, I, I learned really early on, this is like a 20 years ago, that, you know, that this, this when, the, when people don't understand, they always think they know better. <laughs> and, and, and the whole thing of this, this greatness of having this respite where, where you can provide a place where these parents, that stresses, the stresses they feel, that if you're not a part of it, you don't understand. It's like being, it's like telling somebody, yeah. I suffer from chronic pain 24 hours a day. And they go, yeah. but yeah. you're walking around. Yeah, but every every nerve in my body right now is on fire. And I'm doing everything to be nice to you right now when I really want to wring your neck. You know, yeah. and this, yeah. is, this is what it's like, isn't it? I mean, this is what it's like yeah. for people yeah. at that level. I'm around around you, I mean. You, I mean. I've seen, I've seen you go, go walk the street, street and go, and go oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Oh, <laughs> I can't hold myself up and we've gone, oh, there goes Aru, let's bring him inside. Yeah. It, they can see that. And I think this is the great thing about the respite funding because the, um, the, the community realizes that these parents, that these children, these adults need time out. And um, to away from that stress and away from that struggle of being wired 24 hours a day to think about that person. What if, if I leave them, they're going to go and yeah, yeah. hit their hand on something. And I'm, I, when I was like, just the two hours of looking up for a baby with autism, and he was really high up, really, really high up, right, totally wired. And... You couldn't take your eyes off because I just sort of imagine like, what's it like for the parent to just not and and when with the whole respite, I think is a good is the best thing, 
and to be to make people aware that there is a place especially if you just want to be able to come to you know to the art center and just take your focus off and just draw away and just not have to worry about the child for that couple hours so that you can actually yeah, unwind that's it. So I, I, was, I said to one of the parents, once, I, said, I said, what do you do when you drop your child off here for two hours? I said, what is it you do? And she said, I sleep. Yeah. <laughs> I thought that is awesome because that yep. is what, it's not just art for the child. It's what, you know, the, the parents need it too. It, it is yep. a need. It's um. And what you're saying about the autism and, ab and everything, as you know, uh, uh, we lost our little boy mm. and the art centre is in his memory. So we set up um, the Auckland Art Centre after he died and he was severely autistic. And we went through exactly what you were saying. You know, we, we love him to the ends of earth, but my gosh, it took two adults full time to watch the child and make sure he didn't hurt himself or he didn't yeah. something didn't happen or he didn't you went to the toilet you had to mm. take him with you and he didn't produce melatonin so we didn't produce the hormone that makes him sleep yeah. so at night one parent would lie down on the sheepskin rug with a hand on him to make sure he didn't get up at 3am and decide to go wandering yeah so we know exactly where you're coming from <laughs> with your experience. And people would say to me, oh, it's a case of discipline or they've got their opinions or whatever. And I'd go, right, well, you have my son for the weekend. Yeah. And I remember one particular circumstance, I left him with my mum, and it was just for a party for the night. Mm. And the text messages, I missed half of them, went, um, I can't settle Ezra. Mm. Can you come and help out? Mm. You come back now, please. Get your bum back home. Come and pick up your freaking kid. <laughs> and that's when I got the messages. And I got got home the next day, early in the morning, and said to mum, I'm so sorry. She said, I do not know how you do it. I lost him three times. I thought he was in the house. He had shut the door. He was in the yep. bathtub and had turned on the water. And I'm like, yeah. Yeah. Welcome to life with a child with severe ASD. It is not it is not as simple as locking this or shutting that or having, you know, or watching them 24-7. It is not possible. And yeah. care and help and funding is absolutely needed. It's not always easily accessible. And we thought, how can we help with our skills? And our skills are in art and our experiences in healing yeah. after trauma because We've been through cancer, abusive relationships, house fires, um, the death of a child, just everything. Mm. And, but it's this so is the important. thing. Well, if, if oh, you, well, when you're, starting when, again. Yeah. When you, when you actually been in, through all that, you become a gentler person. You become a wiser person to other people's needs. And I think this thing here, what we're experiencing now is showing us that all the things that we thought were important are not so important. Like teachers, right? We look at teachers, we go, oh, we don't need, they don't need more funding. They don't, they don't need a raise. And then you're stuck with your kid for four weeks and you have to educate them. And you them can't from, do it because it's changed. <laughs> yeah. And for three, three of your kids at home, 24 hours a day, guess what? Now you appreciate the teachers more. And you go, oh, I wish, I understand now why they want to, want, they don't like 20, 30 people in their, in their classrooms, why they want smaller classrooms, yeah. right? Why seven, like you're saying, no more than seven is better. Why are we overfilling our classrooms with kids who maybe three of them are disrupting? Why do we need special classes for those three disrupting kids? Oh, because, you know, all, my, my child's a really, really great person, great person. And then you realize when they're at home for that four weeks, you got them, you realize that, yeah, they were the bad kids. Now that that's why you're getting all these letters at home. Now you see them for the real. And I think it's, 
this is you know this is a magic period for parents to actually learn about their children because and how much struggles teachers go through and um and uh, you know when you go oh my kid's not a bully and then you realize they're bullying their, their, their siblings and you go well maybe he's like that it's well, this is why he's like it's you know if he's not looking after his siblings at home what is he like at school and you know and all yeah. this it's a very good learning period for, I think, for parents of normies, let's just say, children. Because I even think they, I'm yeah. time with my children, being a business owner, we work so hard yeah. that we don't often see our kids. And when we do, I'm, mm. I'm teaching or I'm doing something else. So it's been yeah. really great to have some good quality time and reconnect with our children again. Yeah, that is, um, that's the plus side as well of that. Um, but the other thing was like, um, then you have the medical staff, you know, and uh, who have had to send the children away. And um, so while some of us are like, um, you know, enjoying time with their kids, others are not um, because of um, them having to do essential work. It's the same. It's, so I think we are really learning about what's, what's important in our society. And I think it's great um, to be able to learn. And this is a time to learn. One thing I did learn when our son did pass away and we went through all that stuff mm. um, was just, again, personally, this is just something that I'm going to put out there to the world. It reflects on no one or anyone else, really. But something I learned was that it's not the money or the job or the car or the clothes that matters. It's the person and the community and the connections yeah. And it's not until sometimes you've been through extreme mm -hmm. stress or grief or trauma and you see how the community gathers around that you actually understand the value and importance of that because mm -hmm. economic, like the, the world is more than numbers and economics and profits. Yeah. They're, at the end of it, and th what this lockdown has shown is that, yes, that is stressful and we're all worrying about it, mm -hmm. but we're all we're all doing okay you know we've um it has as you said shown that many of those things that we thought were top priority are non-essential or not as important i mean we're all the same underneath it all yeah. aren't we it's it's very uh, yeah. interesting that um i think we can either be better through this or we can be bitter they always, you know, that's like a coin phrase that we always say, uh, you know, in times of uh, grief, in times of trauma and, and stress. But it's 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 a time to to be educated as well, uh, to learn um, and to focus, as you said, on what's yeah. important. And I think, um, you know. Um, I think there's nothing else we can add to the, to any of this, but to say, hey, look, there's opportunities available to learn. Uh, if you if you want to get off your butt and just decide today's the today's the time I need to learn. Uh, I have opportunities available, like like what you're doing, uh, where people can just from around the world can start a course or distance learning, right? You you can do distance learning. Why not? We can do um online online tutorials now. Um, and hey, you know? I thought today online. Sorry for interrupting, but we just got a note from TLC, the Learning Connection, which is the online arts diploma place in New Zealand, and they're offering free diplomas in arts. Cool. So that's funding. Do it. Yeah so, yeah, if you wanna, yeah, so if you want to take up a course uh, to be funded, um, you know, to get funded to do, uh, so your, your resources get paid for your uh, equipment, yeah. So how much is it worth? Uh, the learning connection hmm. one or our Other one? diplomas, like, hum, like even the, the wins ones, let's start with the local wins one. How much is that worth? Oh, so... Uh, one of the ones, the most expensive one that we have is a 10-week training course, and it is $500 for mm. 10 weeks. And WINS covers that cost, and in some cases they've covered the compressor and paints and airbrushes mm. as well. So it's been about $1,000 worth of funding for 10 mm. weeks, which has been 
pretty good. We run 10-week blocks, and for the children's classes, there is little as 25 a lesson or 250 mm. for those 10 weeks. Um, and then our special needs classes are $17 a lesson, and our Saturday craft class is $15. Now, the Saturday craft class, you can't get respite for, though. The rest you can. So we also discount pensioners. We discount special needs. So essentially what we do is lessons that belong to the Northland Arts Centre are $25 a lesson if you're able-bodied and able-minded. If you are special needs or over 65, you get a discount. And for the Airbrush Venturi course, which is our um, most academic course, um, that one is um, five hundred dollars for ten lessons. So that one is fifty dollars a lesson, and that one's for two hours. All materials provided, including airbrushes, are oh, two and a half. There you go. Jason just corrected me. Two and a half hours per night, fifty dollars a night is our most expensive non-discounted course. So still really cheap. Okay. Well. Um and, it, and, and finishing, is there anything you'd like to add? Um, whew. Just for people to keep expanding their minds. <laughs> How arty is that? <laughs> Be prepared for, I feel, and, and I might be the only person that feels this, but I think once we come out of level, is it three or two, and we're allowed to go back and have, events and open again i really feel the economy is going to be boosted in a huge way definitely so i'm feeling really positive about the reopening of the economy i feel as though there's some great opportunities that are going to open up great things to do with your family and friends support the local businesses support mm. the festivals support the local artists I can assure you if anyone's worried about covid and festivals they're not going to open until it's safe too yeah. and then vendors because i'm quite often a vendor at events like that are mm. taking the highest hygiene practices possible mm. to not have themselves or your family get sick so hygiene practices across the board for businesses have just been amped up mm. <laughs> so so invest, once we come out of lockdown, invest in level three, invest in online business, support your artists and patrons, have a look around. There's got to be patrons out there. People need money right now. Come on, patrons, be seed patrons, yeah. start new, uh, support new projects, support ongoing pod projects. So let's just boost the economy. Hmm. Excellent. Well, I mean, we love one uh, another. Yeah, and that's it. Uh, if you're sitting on money, well, and, uh, uh, you know, we're thinking about helping the arts, well, now's the chance to do that. And um, I'll, that's, uh, we just reached over um, the one, in, one hour and a bit minute times. So thank you for your time, Julia. Um, you've been doing, you know, you've basically taken, you know, taken uh, a crisis to an opportunity by online teaching and stuff and that's great to see and as you said there's uh, funding available for people who want to learn and for those of those who are just sitting at home wondering what oh, i'm interested in doing arts but i've never had a opportunity never could see it there's funding available from wins and diplomas and scholarships uh there's also so many ways rather than just sitting at home twiddling your fingers at gaming or whatever just being down and depressed uh, now that you haven't got a job because of beer bug, you have opportunities out there learn to, to be. Game Sorry, <laughs> I said, learn to be that game designer instead of playing the games. Exactly, the, and being an artist, um, you know this. This is a time, and I think if you don't take the opportunity now, you probably won't have the time later on to do that. So, thank you, um, Julia. Um, all the best. I'll catch up with you sometimes in the future as we come out of this and physically give you a hug i miss our hugs and um yeah yeah, <laughs> so, yeah thank you so much and for everybody who's watching hey, so um, support the arts uh, i can't say it anymore um more um, it's it's important it's very important to our soul 
uh, if you're not, a, you know, if you're not a religious person, you, the spirituality that comes from being from arts is amazing. So, you know, as 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 someone who's experiences both, and someone who's actually does art as well as promotes art and promotes business and promotes small business and understands the needs and um, the demands on a person to do work, especially now when you're locked down and you're depressed, you just got to do something. If you don't do something, mm -hmm. you are missing out an opportunity right now to do something. So while you're locked down, take the opportunity to learn something and it'll, it, you will, you will, won't realize what you've missed until you have missed it is what I always think about. It's like, take every, every opportunity and try anything. Throw that friggin' mud at the wall and something will stick. And that's something yep. that sticks is going to help you out in the long run. Learn a new skill while you're at home in front of that computer. Thank you, Julia. Uh, all the best to the family, and we'll see you soon. Bye. Thank you so much for having us.